My friends, hope you're having a great day. Chad Livingston with the Amuna Project. Listen, I wanted to share with you something very special. So this came uh, home with my kids from Shul. It says, the Livingston Family Mitzvah Bag. <laughs> so basically, obviously, it's a little bag. We hang this over the door handle in the kitchen on the pantry. And we have little note cards attached here. And basically, the idea is that when someone does something good for another family member, we write down on there, we say, you know, mom did such and such. Thank you very much. And we put that in the bag. So we're pointing out the good deeds of other people in the family. Then what we like to do with this uh, is on Shabbat, we open up the bag and everyone is hoping that their name is on one of the cards so that we can pull that out, read what was on there. Ooh, Ellie made challah. Fantastic. So like we'll pull that out. And then if your name is on the bag or on the, on the notes in the bag, you get a little piece of candy, a little chocolate or something. And that helps us in two ways. One, it helps us to remember to try to do our best all the time, to try to be kind and to do as many good things as we can throughout the week. And it also helps us to be thankful to the people that are doing those things for us. It encourages us to have an attitude of thankfulness because they're actually writing it down. One of the things that we struggle with, um, I think just about everybody struggles with this, is, uh, is depression. Self-persecution um, can lead to depression. So we have to find ways to where we can say, I'm actually, I'm really a good person and everything that's in my life is happening to me for the best. It's difficult for us to rise above our nature, for us to come to a, a spot where we're doing something above what is natural for us to do. And it's natural for us to look at things in the negative and to be depressed. And we have to rise above that. In last week's Torah portion in, uh, in Parshish Bo, um, you'll, as you're reading through there, and we were reading through this on Shabbat, um, and it says that uh, as the children of Israel are leaving Mitzrayim, they're, they're leaving Egypt, and not a dog sharpened its tongue against anyone in Israel that was leaving. So we kind of discussed uh, with the family, because the kids are young, like what is, what is sharpening your, your tongue? And we said that if a person has a sharp tongue, that means that they're, they're verbally aggressive, if their tongue is sharp and it would be difficult to speak with them because of the aggressive nature of the, of the conversation. So whenever we see that the Torah says not a, not a dog had sharpened its tongue, what we realize is that no dogs barked as Israel was leaving Mitzrayim. And I'm sure that any of you have been on walks or runs or whatever, and you're going past the neighbor's house and here comes the dogs up to the fence and they're bark, 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 because uh, they're not used to seeing you there or they're just barkers or whatever. And so it's very natural for a dog to bark at passers-by. Well, as the children of Israel are leaving Mitzrayim, no dogs bark. It's an amazing thing. And interestingly enough, I mean, this doesn't happen very often where you would see something of this nature. Uh, the dogs don't bark. The dogs have risen above their nature. Isn't that something where you actually have an example of, you know, it's not like, oh, hey, Abraham rose above his name. Like, it's not that huge thing like that. It's a dog. It's like the smallest thing and it changes its nature. So that helps us to realize that we too can change our nature. Very interesting thing is that uh, the dogs, what they say is that the, the dogs actually merited um, something very, very holy. One of the most holy things that we have on the planet are tefillin. And the coloring on the tefillin, the black, um, actually comes uh, from, uh, you can research this out, but it comes from, from the dogs. And very interesting. And so them changing their nature has elevated them to, to uh, a really unique merit. Anyway, so I hope that all of us have the realization that we don't have to be these huge hakamim, these huge wise, um, you know, sages or whatever 
to, to rise above what's natural for us. And what is natural for us, again, is to get into depression, is to get into self-persecution, it's to say, I'm not good enough. We have to combat that with prayer. Uh, one of my biggest problems when I first started trying to do as Bo to do, when I first tried personal prayer time, was no words would come out. I would sit. And there is merit in just sitting, just, just showing up. If you show up, there is merit in that. But someone told me, pray for the ability to pray. So I started to pray, Master of the Universe, please give me words so that I could speak to you. Please help me to have personal prayer. Please give me personal prayer. And it happens. Not every day is like I'm not praying profusely. It's not just pouring out of me every day. But I do have times and moments where I feel like I'm really making that connection with the Creator. And so can you. I'm not, uh, I'm not anybody special. I'm just someone who's taken a little bit of time and asked God, please give me prayer. Uh, so you can do it too. We can rise above our nature. If you have a situation where you feel like um, you're not worthy enough, or you don't have enough friends, or you don't have enough money, um, that's the big one for us. We're, we're in a lot of debt, and um, you know we're, we're struggling through that. It's not good for you to say, I have failed, or I'm not succeeding in this. Um, that is a lack of faith. It's a lack of trust. It's a lack of imuna because you, you have to say, master of the universe, creator of the world, I understand that everything is for my best. And the reason that I have this debt, the reason that I don't have a good friend in my life right now or multiple good friends in my life right now is because you have decided that that's what's best for me right now. And for us personally in our family, I've said this a couple times, if I didn't have the debt, we wouldn't, I would not have dug into personal prayer like I'm doing, and therefore I would not be in the same type of relationship that I have with the Creator right now because I would, I would have just ha thought that I got out of it on my own. And whenever you get out of things without prayer, then you get conceited and pretty soon you're going to have a big fall. So pray, guys. Spend time in personal prayer. Even ask Hashem, say, Master of the Universe, I understand that what you have done with this particular thing, with my lack of friends or whatever, that was the best thing for me. And I know that's where you want me to be. And you are right in doing it. Even if there's something in me that I am doing that's incorrect, if there's some way that I'm missing the mark of what you want me to do, um, show me what it is. Because you see everything. I can't see it. Please show me, open it up to me so that I can see it because I know that you're doing correct. Whatever the judgment is that's on me that is keeping me from you know, succeeding in this area, it's correct. It is correct and true judgment and it's the best thing for me. It's actually merciful, mercy coming from you. So please show me what it is so that I can fix it. Show me what I need to do spiritually to fix it. And then you would also pray again that he would bring you out of it. You would say, please help me have a good friend. Please find me a good friend that is righteous, that would be someone that would be appropriate for me to be in friendship with. Um, God, please help me pay off the debt. Pay it off. I, I want to just, you know, just pay it off. Why not ask your dad for a gift? Uh, I asked my dad for gifts as I was growing up. Dad, would you please get me a stick of gum? Can I, can I have this uh, box of candy? You know, whatever. And one really cool example that my dad, when I, my dad did when I was a kid, we were at a grocery store. I remember this very well. I had said, Dad, may I have this such and such, whatever it was, a candy bar or something? And he said, no. I said, okay, thanks. And I set it back on the, uh, on, on the shelf. And a couple moments later, I see my dad go reach over and he picks up the candy bar and he buys it for me and he hands it to me. He says, you can have this. And I'm like, what? You just said no. He said, yes, but your attitude changed my mind. Now that was really a learning experience for me because I was able to then say, okay, I can be thankful for the way that my dad has decided things should be for me because he knows best. And when I am thankful, now 
things begin to go more the way that I want them, I suppose, or, or whatever. But either way, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm in the situation that I'm in, and that allows me to be in a better spot. I'm not having the depression because I'm not self-persecuting my, I'm not persecuting myself and getting depressed on my lack of success or lack of friends or lack of money, whatever it happens to be. I'm actually saying, Hashem, you are the creator and you are doing things for the best. That helps us avoid uh, conceit. It helps us avoid a fall. I know it's a long video, guys, but I uh, had a lot to share. Um, grab yourself a mitzvah bag and make sure you do something today to put your name in it. All the best.